If my recent review of Real Bout Fatal Fury didn't make it all the more obvious, I fucking love fighting games, especially this past year. That Real Bout review that I did a month ago, like a few weeks ago at the very least, that was honestly just a byproduct of my recent love and slight obsession with the fighting game genre, let's be real. The stars aligned, and considering all of those circumstances, I decided that this would be the perfect time to talk about the top six fighting games, or rather, my top six fighting games. Let's fucking do this. Number six. might have invented the polygonal fighting game with Virtua Fighter back in 1993, but Namco, they absolutely dominated it with the Tekken series all the way back starting in late 1994. And the cool thing about Tekken is that the games got better with pretty much every iteration that came after the other. Tekken 3 first released to arcades in 1996 before receiving a superior PlayStation version in 1998, was honestly where Namco perfected the Tekken formula with the animations, the movements, the balancing, the controls, and loads of other cool stuff. It even introduced the fan favorite Tekken Ball, which I really need to check out sometime, which wouldn't show up again in the series until Tekken Tag Tournament 2 in 2012, which I also really need to check out sometime, and I believe you're starting to notice a pattern here. I am quite the lazy fucker. And I'm also quite the poor fucker, as the PS1 version of Tekken 3 is the most recent game in the series that I've been able to properly spend some good time with, at least currently, so I have not yet given the proper time to its highly superior successors yet. Despite that though, Tekken 3 did so much shit right and holds up so well, even to this day, that I have no problems with including it in my list. The sequels still get honorable mentions, by the way. And hey, this is a great place to start with the Tekken series. I know that from experience because Tekken 8 your average fighting game, okay? Its learning curve is definitely steeper with four buttons for controlling four limbs plus all the wacky ass combos you can obliterate your adversaries with. This ain't just another Street Fighter and Namco won't let you forget that for even a second. Thankfully, the practice mode and in-game moveless make the game definitely accessible for anyone to jump in on that spicy, sexy Tekken action. And Said action is definitely quite spicy and definitely quite sexy. When you get a feel for how your character moves and master those daunting combos and special moves, you'll be dropping computer opponents in rapid succession and it feels so damn good. That satisfaction alone is pretty much what made me fall in love with this game and made me want to check out the sequels. But until that happens, I could always come back to this 90s masterpiece from one of my favorite games. Good Looking Super Game, presented for you by game creator Namco. Number five. series that forever popularized fighting games, mainly with Street Fighter 2. Without Street Fighter 2, there is only Fatal Fury. Not that that's a bad thing, but I just love Street Fighter 2. But as much as I love the multiple iterations of Street Fighter 2, the Alpha Trilogy was where I feel Capcom finally perfected the Street Fighter formula, mainly with Street Fighter Alpha 2. Interestingly, this game is actually both a remake and a sequel to the original Street Fighter Alpha, adding in more playable characters and introducing the custom combo system while retaining the awesome stuff from Alpha 1 that made it better than Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. The beautiful anime art style, air blocking, the great music, the more manageable speed, the inclusion of characters from Street Fighter 1 and Final Fight. Yes, 
that final fight, and most importantly, Dan Hibiki. Dan was originally created by the Street Fighter devs at Capcom in order to take the piss out of Ryo Sakazaki and Robert Garcia from SNK's Art of Fighting series, as Capcom saw them as ripoffs of their very own Ryu and Ken, which is the ultimate irony as one of the people who helped create the original Street Fighter was the man responsible for Art of Fighting in the first place, but of course, I'm getting ahead of myself. Despite being a silly, weak, and snarky joke character, Dan was still a legitimately fun character to play as, especially for those who were great at Street Fighter. Like me? All in all, this is as great as it gets with the Street Fighter series. <laughs> Unless you count the crossovers. Number four. <laughs> X-Men fighting game. People loved it. So what better way to take things to the next level than with a crossover between characters from Marvel's X-Men series and their very own Street Fighter series. Enter X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Truly a game for the ages. The game plays similarly to my beloved Street Fighter Alpha 2, but the movements and actions are much more hyperbolized, kind of like a comic book. Clever thinking, Capcom. Being able to jump higher and do aerial projectile moves is not only ridiculously fun, but it particularly brings to mind the old Taiwanese Street Fighter 2 bootlegs like Rainbow Edition and Kodio Edition, except this craziness is now in an official Capcom fighting game and a lot better balanced than those bootlegs. The fights in this game are also in a tag team setup where you choose a pair of two characters and are able to switch them out at will throughout the fights unless one character's energy gauge gets depleted before you're able to do so and you're stuck with the other character. The over-the-top action and tag team setup make this game such a fun time, whether you're an X-Men fan or a Street Fighter fan. Or both. And of course, this was the start of Capcom's series of Marvel crossover fighting games, which eventually led to one of the most highly praised video games of all time, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Though, since I actually haven't bothered playing that game yet, you're getting this instead for this list. Nonetheless, X-Men vs. Street Fighter still provides large amounts of gracious joy and is easily my favorite from the likes of Japan Capsule Computers. Number three. <laughs> I praised the ever-loving crap out of Real Bout Fatal Fury in my recent review of it, and for good reason. It's truly one of the best fighting games ever made, and deserves the same amount of respect as other highly beloved classics in this genre. However, there is one such title in SNK's revered Fatal Fury series that I love even more, and it's none other than its sequel, Real Bout Fatal Fury Special. Real Bout Despite this game reducing the three-lane system to a mere two-lane system akin to the first three Fatal Fury games, and scrapping the ring-out system from the rest of the series, this game still took most of what I love about the first real bout and amped it the fuck up. Characters from previous titles that didn't show up in real bouts, such as Tung Fu Ru and Wolfgang Krauser, are playable here in real bout special, which is awesome! And the controls have been slightly tweaked to be pretty much perfect. There's also just a great sense of fun with this game. Even with all the little stuff, like the wisecracking and goofy announcer. That comes, wow, looks tough and really angry. And as well, the humorous end credits montage. Now, I feel I should mention something about this game since I have the opportunity. Remember when I vented about Yamazaki in the Real Bout Fatal Fury review? Well, for one thing, it's a lot easier to deal with here than in the previous game, thank fucking Christ. But there's also a fighter in Real Bout Special, returning from Fatal Fury Special, that just brings my piss to a boil pretty much just as much. Though ironically, it took me a lot less time to deal with while I was recording game footage. And it's none other than the bullfighter and second-hand man Wolfgang Krauser, Lawrence Blood. That bastard is so unrelenting and aggravating, 
that you'll think that he and Yamazaki would get a freaking room together. And Krauser still poses quite the challenge that his half-brother Geese exhibited in Real Bout 1, though just like that game, he can be conquered with enough patience and clever thinking. Outside of these occasional frustrations, this truly is the best of what the Fatal Fury series had to offer, and it's truly a shame how we never got a worthy follow-up since then. But alas, Real Bout Fatal Fury Special earns its place in the pantheon of fighting game excellence, as well as a soft spot within the confines of my vital organs. Number two. In 1994, SNK blew everyone away with the coolest freaking idea in the world. A crossover fighting game between some of their various series, with numerous characters and teams to choose from. Not only that, but they would release a new one every year, improving on what they did every time. And 1998 was when SNK finally got it perfect. So many characters, so many team opportunities, so many varied special moves, so much awesome music, and so much choice. It's no wonder why so many people love the King of Fighters 98 and regularly play it even in 2021, especially with the Ultimate Match and Ultimate Match Final updates and even the recent online multiplayer beta tests for the Steam version of Ultimate Match Final. And while there are plenty of other fan favorite KOF games that came afterwards, and the upcoming KOF 15 shows quite a lot of promise, I can't help but choose 98 as the one for my list. I could freaking go to town as Terry, Joe, and Andy, and have a damn great time laying the smack down on my opponents. And the vibrant selection of characters from multiple series is what gives this, and the whole KOF series, so much personality. I love the Cycle Soldier team, and especially the American sports team. Lucky Glober might just be my favorite character in the whole series, and he's definitely a super fun guy. The sucky thing is that the US sports team hasn't even appeared in the series since 98, so what the hell is even going on right now? Rugal may be a crazy, powerful boss and just an overall cocky son of a bitch, but he can be taken down when the strategy becomes clear, and it's oh so satisfying showing that fool up, even more so than Yamazaki or Lawrence put together. What more can be said? I fucking love this game. Get it if you can, and have an absolute blast with it. We're not gonna stop. It's the King of Fighters 98. Now, real talk. I always knew, ever since this game came out and I played it for the very first time, that it was the very best of what the fighting game genre had to offer. However, for the longest time, I never really played it that much, and I never really felt compelled enough to, you know, to sit down and play it on the regular, or just out of my own, you know, out of my own will. But recently, during this year-long fighting game obsession, I got to play it with some of my friends at least a couple times, and through that, I have come to truly recognize how absolutely amazing this game is. And now I found a newfound love and appreciation for this game greater than ever before in my entire life. More than any point in history have I ever appreciated this game than now. Some of y'all might not even agree with this pick. I imagine a good number of you are gonna be real surprised what my number one choice is, but it is what it is. Number one. amazing how far the Super Smash Brothers series has come since its 1999 inception. What started as a uniquely simple fighting game crossover between Nintendo franchises completely and utterly evolved into the biggest and greatest fighting game crossover ever created. So many characters from numerous series with various attacks and fighting styles are available at your disposal to play as or fight against. 
Hell, they've even got my boys Ryu, Ken, and Terry in there too, and they're just as fun to smack down with as ever. Even fucking Sora from Square Enix's Kingdom Hearts, which in and of itself was a crossover RPG, is in this damn game. And outside of the vast character selection, the thing I feel that makes Smash Ultimate so fucking neat is the absolute feeling of choice. There is so much choice in this damn game. The amount of options and customization at the character's disposal caters to so many different kinds of gamers, including myself. Don't like having to launch your opponents out of the ring multiple times just to win? Kick it old school with stamina battles instead. Want to fight KOF style in teams rather than your standard versus affair? Have a blast with Squad Strike! Don't like falling off the edge of a cliff or having quirky platforms, items, and stage hazards get in your way? You can turn off items and choose stages without any cliffs or obstacles or whatnot, like the King of Fighters Stadium. Are you playing with people who are nowhere near as skilled or as experienced as you are? Had the game automatically give you a handicap to balance things out based on how things go. I could keep going on, but I think you understand my point. In the vast sea of amazing fighting games, none have ever been able to offer so much choice and provide as much fun as Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And I can confidently say, with a bold smile on my face, that it is the undoubtedly greatest fighting game of all time. And there you have it, my favorite fighting games ranked in ascending order. It was downright wonderful having the opportunity, the privilege to play through most of these games again to give myself a fresh look and idea on why I love them so damn much. But alas, being able to express my love for my favorite things is, you know, part of why I love doing these types of videos and just my content in general. And they even serve as a potential breeding ground and further fruitful discussion on said things. Games do bring people joy after all. But anyway, you should definitely check out every single one of these games in this video by any means and whenever you can. You definitely won't regret them and I consider all of them masterpieces. Hopefully this video has compelled you, you know, to do so, to go check those games out. And I also hope it's also brought you some times, some tidings of great joy. And if it has, then I highly implore you to share this with your friends so that they can enjoy it and that they can let me know how much they enjoyed it. And be sure to let me know how much you enjoyed it in the comments, you know, your thoughts, your opinions, your various whatevers, you know. It's all about the love, and just as always, thank you everybody for watching. I am Andrew Ambrose, and I will catch you later.